You're listening to Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast. I'm Kimberly Evans, and I've been planning incredible events for the past 16 years. I'm passionate about connecting people, creating purposeful gatherings, and making the most out of every moment. Join me as we learn together how to find joy, celebrate the simple things in life, use events to grow your business, and have a whole lot of fun along the way. Every day can be a reason to celebrate. Cheers to Celebrating Simple Life. A few summers ago, we were putting in a new fence in our backyard and made sure to contact Sask Energy first. They want you to know what's below. Hitting an underground utility line can be costly and very dangerous. Always plan ahead. Get a line locate for any digging projects you have going on this summer. Like if you happen to be building a deck or putting in a new fence. It's absolutely free to have Sask Energy come out and it will definitely allow you to stay safe and save yourself the expense of contacting an underground utility line. Visit clickbeforeyoudig.com to request your free line locate today. Today on Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast, I'm chatting with Jessica Jacobson, creator of Lark and Muddy. The mission behind Lark and Muddy is that by supporting fair trade, ethically made and sustainably made businesses in developing countries, we can change someone's life for the better. As a business, Jessica connects with artisans in different countries and works together with them to import their products to Canada to be sold. This allows their business to thrive and for us to enjoy these incredible handmade products. From earrings, necklaces, bracelets, and even purses and shaving kits, one of their partnerships creates pieces made from tires rescued from the middle of highways in Haiti. It is the essence of sustainably made fashion. Their pieces are elegant reminders that creative intentions have the power to better our world. Join us as we chat all about sustainable business and how even small changes can make the biggest difference at a global level. Tune in today. Hello, Jessica. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hello. It's good to be here. This is so great. I am so excited to hear your story. I have really been looking forward to this conversation and we have this interesting friendship where we met uh, a few years ago when uh, our family lived in Moose Jaw and yet your family also has ties to Saskatoon in different ways and we made those random connections while we lived there and now here we are on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Years later, here we are. Years later, here we are. Well, this is so great. So I cannot wait to dig in to your Lark and Muddy story and how this all came to be. And you guys are just such a shining light of a family. We were just so happy to get to know you um, when we lived in Moose Jaw. And it's hard starting fresh in a new city, in a new place as adults and trying to figure Mm -hmm. out how to navigate relationships and life. And you guys just slept in and made us feel like friends right away. And it's, crazy how much has happened between since when we met you and where we are now and I would love to hear sort of just your background a little bit and how this really cool idea for your business came to be. Sure yeah well um, my background is um, I am born and raised a prairie girl I've lived here most of my life until I married a man who decided he was going to join the military. (laughs) And then we, so we traveled around the country for a good 11 years, um, just living in many different provinces. And we decided, you know what, we need to just make our family more of a priority and we need to just switch gears here because it was starting to be a little hard on our kids, all the moving around and the uprooting. So we decided to settle in small city Moose Jaw. Um, now, how did we, you guys finally pick Moose Jaw after being all over the place in different places in Canada? How did this thing come to be? Did you like spin a bottle or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we, I was raised in Regina and my husband was raised in Saskatoon. And so this was kind of the nearest military base to um, wow. our families and our, and just our roots. So we thought we're just going to see if we can settle there and, um, yeah, just put down some roots for our kids and for our family. So Musha was the place. And there it was. We've been it's here kind for, of funny, actually, yeah. that such a small city has a military base, hey? I know, such a big one too, right? So Yeah, such a big mm-hmm. military base in such a small city. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we've been here great. seven years now, and we are loving it. So, um, yeah, it's just been 
so good for our family and just good to to um, get involved in the community and just um, yeah, just start a new phase of life here. That's amazing. Um, so, yeah. how did you? How did you then? So, because I know you, um, mm-hmm. this I know I know some of your story here. But how did you decide? I know that you. One of the things I admired most about you when we um, met and got to know each other is that you home educate your children, and your family had a major transition that took place in it while we knew you because when we first met you, you had two children and now That's you right. have three. <laughs> no, now we have four. Four. <laughs> Surprise. See, I'm missing a whole piece. I'm like jumping <laughs> forward. I'm going to back up the track. Continue your story. Okay. Yeah, no, when we got to Musha, we just um, were in a place where we felt like, you know what, our family is um, such a gift to us and our um, our marriage was growing and doing well, and our kids were we felt were flourishing and and we just thought that we have more room in our hearts and in our lives for children, so we decided that we would become foster parents. so when we first met you, we had our first placement um, and i I vividly remember coming to your home and feeling so flustered. <laughs> No. <laughs> and having this new baby which it had been a while go. since you had had a brand new baby because your kids oh, yeah. are not babies anymore <laughs> yeah like six years in between so we were able to foster this little girl for uh four years and then last january we uh legally adopted her as our daughter that is so amazing yes yeah and yeah she is such a gift to our family but then, um, shortly after we adopted her, her um, biological brother came into care. And so we decided that we would bring him into our family as well. And we've been fostering him for the last year and a half. So, wow. yeah, so now there are six. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. That yeah. is just such a, oh, that is just such a beautiful story. I just feel like it takes such special hearts to be able to just make that decision together as a family that you have more to give. Like that is just, oh, I just love that. Oh, so, well, yeah. yeah, it's just so beautiful. So now as your family is growing, and I can only imagine that there have been major roller coasters of, yay, this is all feeling so great. And wow, what have we gotten ourselves into when you were just walking through life, tickety-boo, your kids are independent, doing whatever, and now here we are starting with little ones all over Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our oldest is 14, and now our youngest is two. So there is a massive age range that we're dealing with. We're dealing with teenage hormones. We're dealing with um, still sleepless nights with the toddler. Yes. Right? So we're just... Uh, trying to do it all I guess all at once and why I don't know maybe not but we're having fun you only know what you know right so there's like no turning back and just day by day here we are (laughs) yep yep we're just rolling with it and that's great so Mm -hmm. how did you then decide to start Lark and Muddy and how did this whole the business side of this which is so closely intertwined with experiences and the growth that has been happening in your family, which is why I'm so happy that you shared that story first. How did this all, how did this all come to be that you felt that you need to add yet another baby to your family being (laughs) the business? (laughs) Well, my husband and I have been kind of dreaming about business for the last few years. Um, We just wanted to build something that we could run as a family and, and sort of mentor our children in entrepreneurial skills and just raise them up with with that as a normal. Um and so we we also wanted to to build something that was something that was um something that would give be a positive impact in the world, something that was more than just, you know, selling goods. We wanted to um start a business that could play a part in changing lives. And so Lark and Muddy is actually um an ethically sourced store. So all the products that we sell in our company are fair trade, ethically sourced, and they are, um, so we have partnered with companies um, in India and in Haiti that are over there just doing the groundwork and investing into lives 
and are um, just getting down and dirty and really changing lives over there. And so we thought, you know what, we're going to be the bridge here. We would like to be the bridge between those people in those um, underdeveloped companies. We want to bring their story over here to the West. We want to share the good work that's being done. We want to share the... um, the story that they are doing. We want to share about the lives that are being changed and we want to just um, inspire people in the West here to get involved and to um, to play a part here in the role. So by bringing jewelry pieces over and by bringing bags and um, other other goods over, we thought people in the West can get involved in changing people's lives in a big way by just making a small change in their own lives. So that's that's kind of what we are trying to do here and that what we... Unbelievable. I love that. So how did you in the first place, like as you're dreaming up this business and as you're coming up with ideas, because I know as a business owner myself and in the community of of business owners from who are newly started to people that have been in business for many, many years, there's always this, kind of pivotal point where you're dreaming Mm -hmm. up these ideas and trying to sort of connect the dots, right, in what you want to do as a business, or maybe there's so many ideas that it's hard to narrow it down, or you can't quite think of something. There's kind of a a scale there. And then how do you actually turn that into something that not only is a business, but in your case, also able to help others? Yeah, yeah. how, How did you actually... How did you come to the point of, like, once you had figured out that this was sort of, like, you wanted to be the bridge and this is what you wanted to do, how did you figure out India and Haiti and and how did you connect the dots in those places with figuring out how to even connect with these businesses that were there? Yeah. Well, you know, the it all kind of started. We have, we actually have some very, very close friends that have lived in India for 15 years and we're working for a company in India, a fair trade company, doing the groundwork over there. And they decided, you know what, we're going to go into a new part of India and we're going to start to build into a new group of people um, and start to train these artisans up. And so we thought, oh my goodness, we need to partner with these people. We There's nobody in the world that we trust more than these people. We trust their hearts. We trust their love for the Indian people. We trust... Um, just that they are good, good, solid people. And so we thought, we want to support them. We want to get behind what they're doing, and we can do this. So we joined partners with them, we, and then we decided that we were also going to partner with the, the other company that they had worked with and that had trained them up and grown them up in all these years. So that's two in India, two factories in India. And then we just started to research other other companies and we found this one in Haiti that we just loved the story behind and we loved what they were doing and just the impact that they are um, making in that country and just on the environment. And so we thought, you know what, we're going to get behind this company too and we're going to, um, yeah, just bring their story to Canada and, and uh, yeah, to help them build and, and grow their company over there. So I love that. So is so at this point then these three companies, two in India, one in Haiti, they were they had their own businesses going on where they were like creating products and stuff, but they mm-hmm. were just selling them within their own country. Uh there are a few well there well two of the companies are selling in other places in the states. Um I'm not and in other places in Canada, one of the companies. We are the only um, company currently that brings two of these these companies into Canada. Wow. So, yeah, they have other companies that they work with, um, but but two of the companies are just fresh to Canada because we were able to bring them here. So yeah, that is so exciting. great. Mm-hmm. I love that. So is your hope that you would be continuously kind of looking and searching for more stories like this to kind of keep adding products to the store or are these companies continuously evolving and changing with the types of products and the things that they're putting out that would kind of naturally be changing up? Because I would imagine that this adds 
like some different types of challenges, I would think, than what other types of companies might have where they're just kind of direct sourcing stuff themselves right. versus it kind of flowing through um, this type of system. Yeah. Well, I think the idea is that you would get behind a few companies and you would stay with them and you would help them continue to grow their companies so that their artisans can have um, consistent work and they can provide more uh, work opportunities for more artisans, right? And so we don't want to just jump from company to company to company and then leave leave them hanging. We want to get behind them so that they can continue to grow what they're doing over there. But, I mean, the sky's the limit. You can, we could easily, you know, add other companies on, right. which ideally would be fabulous. Um, but we never want to abandon or to shortchange the companies we've already started to, to invest into, right? Right. Well, because their stories, you are also a part of their story now, too, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 That is so and, amazing. Oh, it's been it's been pretty neat just to even get to know more about the countries and get to know more about the the artisans, the individual artisans in each company, and and the love that 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 people have for working with one another, and the dreams that are that the artisans have for their lives to just um, to get out of poverty, right? To support mm-hmm. their children, to to educate them, to um, you know, to give them proper medical care, to to marry their children off into to healthy relationships. Like it's it's pretty cool just to to be able to get to know and to hear more about how people are rising out of poverty, out of hardship, and are growing. Oh you my know? goodness! Yeah, no kidding. I feel like I can't imagine anything that would give you more passion in your business than that. <laughs> like what you just described, being able to. Right recognize that you get to be a part of that story and a part of not only growing something here that gives yourself the opportunity to do something really cool with your own family in doing this, but also Mm -hmm. getting to have their family stories intertwine. Totally. Yeah. It makes the world feel very small and very um, connected. Yeah. No kidding. So what would you say in this, you've already alluded to some of these things, but what would you say since starting this business, what have you felt so far that has been the most rewarding, the rewarding pieces that have come from this that you maybe wouldn't have expected when you first started? Um, I think, you know, the whole bridging idea is really, really rewarding for me. I think the idea that there's a world over there that is sort of un untouched we don't know a lot about we hear about poverty we hear about hardship but we don't really know and then to bridge that world to our world um, and to have empower us as westerners to do small things like decide that we're going to to consciously make purchases where we can actually support the livelihood of people in other countries rather than just mindlessly purchasing, you know, items that that aren't going to bring better right. the world, right? Right. I think that whole idea that we can excuse me, make small changes in our lives that can greatly, greatly change the lives of others is really, um, really rewarding for me. The thought that this is a culture. We can build a culture here. We can build a culture and a mindset change in 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 our countries in in the West. Well, and I think it's so easy sometimes too that um, sometimes we forget that small, a lot of small acts can mm-hmm. do great things, right? Yeah, I and think I think you're right. It's easy. I mean, all of us are trying to raise our children to be good, kind humans, and we want them to be able to understand um, values and ethics and, like, know what feels right to them and what doesn't feel right to them and to be able to bring situations just like this across across their plate so that they have the opportunity to see um, how to make great change in the world. And it doesn't – you don't have to save the entire world mm-hmm. – 
tomorrow in order to know that you've been able to help one person, one family, one one village, one country, one you know, like totally take those little steps. So I think that's so cool because to buy a pair of earrings or to buy a necklace from you is not putting most of us out anything. Mm-hmm. This is not like these are our normal things that us here in in Canada <laughs> are most not thinking twice about making any type of purchase, right? right? And so Mm -hmm. to be able to know that something as easy as click, 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 here we go, can actually be changing lives is pretty powerful. Isn't that crazy? Like Mm -hmm. earrings or something that I would purchase anyway. So I I can change someone's lives by purchasing something I already purchased. Do you know what I right. mean? Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is, is this too easy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Wait a second. <laughs> totally. So, yeah. again, I guess on the flip side of that, then, obviously, no matter what type of business somebody runs, whether it is very small, medium, big, really yeah. big, giant corporation, there are always challenges. And so nothing beautiful and wonderful ever comes out of things that are all perfectly easy. And unfortunately we as humans always have to learn really hard lessons in order to learn really good things. Right. (laughs) Totally. So what would you say have been some of the challenges and the hardest parts about um, running a business and specifically this type of business that you maybe didn't expect or think of prior to this all starting? Well, one thing I never expected was a global pandemic. (laughs) Yes. Which is sort you of weren't put able a little to predict COVID nineteen before starting this business. Yeah, <laughs> this has flipped things upside down a little bit. So, but no, like things like um, trade shows are all, are canceled, right? Mm-hmm. Or just small things like that are those are ways to get your your product out there and your your name out there and your story out there. And those things are not happening right now. So. We're relying a lot more on social media presence. We're relying a lot more on our website. And mm-hmm. um, so that's, I mean, a, a big shift. It, it's a doable shift and, and we absolutely will carry on and overcome, right? But it does make you think, okay, we need to make some fast changes here. And It's amazing how quickly sometimes those changes, like you put, they probably had, just like I did, things that had been on your to-do list for a while that you're like, oh, I should really get to doing that and then all of a sudden said global pandemic hits and you're right. like oh wow okay this is going to happen tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> okay right? no time to really procrastinate <laughs> yeah like it just has to happen so it's kind of forced me definitely into making some changes and very quickly crossing a few things off of the list that maybe would have been dawdled on a little while longer had this not all hit <laughs> totally so it kind of whips us into shape for sure <laughs> yeah absolutely so did you have a bunch of trade shows and events and things that you were already signed up to participate in that got canceled already for the remainder of the the year or how yeah we had a few in Lucia and a few in okay. Regina, but whatever we'll move on we've moved on and we'll get them next year for sure or maybe even Christmas right so. yeah that's right so have you is there things that you've done within your online um, store that you've tried to pivot and evolve in a little bit more maybe than you were before in order to kind of jump on the jump on the bandwagon that all of us have right. to do in order to pivot in business? Yeah, I think we're all of a sudden we've decided, oh, we're going to do shipping a little differently or we're going to, um, you know, we want to move stuff quicker. So we've got sales happening. And, right. And yeah, because we don't want the, the companies that are overseas to you know, to go without because we've halted. So the right. idea of let's move product, even if it's like we're we're lowering the prices and let's just move it so that these people can can continue to, to work and eat. And, mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and I would imagine that that kind of adds a level of, I don't, I don't feel like pressure is the right word, but it adds a level of like your heart is so in this, in right. this business. This is more than just, it's just a quote unquote business. This is not only a way for you to be supporting your family, but also supporting other families and connecting in your businesses, trying to do such great things. But I would imagine that there is this little sense of, Oh man, we need to, we need to do the best that we can do because we're not just doing this for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're doing this because we want these people to thrive and we don't want that to be something that we're standing in the way of. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 
you've got it right there. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what would you say you are most proud of in the way that your business has been able to help the artisans that are creating these projects? Have you, do you get to hear these personal stories from, from the contacts that you have in these countries where you're probably not communicating directly necessarily with the artisans, or maybe you are, um, to, to hear how, how companies like yours are actually making a difference to them? Well, I think we just we just know that that these people are receiving medical care in, during this mm-hmm. like pandemic time, right? These people are able to work from home and they don't they aren't out of work now. Whereas a lot of people are out of work around the world, but these people they get to move their work to their homes, the safety of their homes, and they they can continue to to make the beautiful art pieces that they've been making, you know, and um uh, I just I think that's super rewarding to know that okay like they have been able things have changed things have shifted but they're still taken care of they're still mm-hmm. um, in an in work environment that is supportive that that wants to grow and nurture them and and yeah and they're doing okay even through that's this amazing. really difficult yeah. time yeah that's amazing. Yeah. Remember the fun candies of the 80s? Fun dip, garbage pail kids, and bottle caps? If you are on the lookout for a creative way to cheer up a friend, show your significant other, bestie, coworker, and special people in your life that you care, I've curated an adorable, delicious, and unique retro sweet treat grazing box. A beautiful, delectable candy grazing box can be shipped right to your door or as a surprise to a friend's door to really make their day. Doorstep delivery is available in Saskatoon and shipping is available anywhere in Canada. And because we could all use a little more joy right now, as a listener of Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast, you get an exclusive code to receive 15% off at checkout with the code CELEBRATE15. You can click right from home at CelebratingSimpleLife.com and use the code CELEBRATE15 because today is a great day to celebrate. So Mm -hmm. I would love to hear a little bit about some of the specific pro- products, I obviously like look through them and they are so unique and and different and beautiful and just, I, I feel like you can almost imagine a story behind every single one of the products that are listed on your website. And mm-hmm. I would love for you to just share a little bit about some of these uh, products and what types of things you actually sell because it's a variety of different things that are now coming from different places. And would you give us a little sneak peek of some of the things that you have um, in your store and where they've come from? Sure, yeah. We've got, um, we work with one company that's out of Haiti and they are ethically, an ethical company, but they're also um, really big on just um, sustaining our environment. And so they have gone above and beyond um, their entire factory is solar powered and a lot of the product that we bring in from them is actually made from repurposed tire i love that i know it's so cool (laughs) i read the website and i was like this is so cool isn't that neat like yeah we have gone out into the highways or into burn house because in haiti they burn tire or they burn rubber so Rather than doing that, they decided, let's go collect all the tire we can. We're going to turn it into um, earrings. We're going to turn it into sandals. We're going to turn it into um, shaving kits. And I have the coolest clutch that I love. Um, and it's all made out of a, of a tire. Like, it's, I love it. Um, so I love that company so much because they're just doing a lot of really um, creative things to, to well, just... and it really shows their entrepreneurial spirit too, right? To be able to do oh, yeah. something. And I think that again, just connects our world. Like that is how people starting businesses here who feel like they're noticing something, they're mm-hmm. noticing a problem they want to fix. They're noticing something that they wish was different or better or done in another way that yeah. they then are able to think creatively about it and do something about it. And I think that's so cool because 
it sure hasn't crossed my mind to go on the side of the road and collect tire bits oh, yeah. to no, make either. clutches <laughs> and earrings. You know, that would never cross my mind in a million years. But I just think that's so cool because everybody's minds work so differently that that's what they they took from it. And here we are. I'm sure when they first thought up that idea, they had a few people being like, um, no, that's the that worst work. idea yeah. I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And here yeah. we are wearing earrings in Canada. <laughs> that are made from, rubber and made from yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty neat. We have actually been able to work with another company in India that we have been able to do some design with, so collaborative design, which has Fun. been really neat. Yeah, so I have done um, just working on, on, you know, jewelry. We made some Christmas ornaments with them that were made from recycled saris and beads. Cool. We made, um, I did a couple of drawings that I sent then to India and they silk screened them onto bags and journals and uh, frames, um, keychains, all this kind of things. And then, and then artisans on one of the, the pieces that I drew, the artisans in India watercolor painted them before they silk screened them onto different items. Wow. So yeah, just so many creative collaborative things that have just been really, really neat to, to be a part of. That is so cool. I love that. Well, and to get to, especially as you mentioned before, that part of you um, wanting to start this business was for your family to be able to be in the world of business and entrepreneurship, to be able to have not only the business side of things, but the creative side of things and to actually mm-hmm. see how designing something here can turn it into some an actual physical product over there. Yeah. What a cool what a cool circle of events, hey. <laughs> yeah, so neat. So neat just to be a part of the of the process and watch it all unfold and yeah. It makes you feel like you are a team, even though I've not met these people. They don't know me, you know, personally, but we we are working on projects together. Our hands have touched you know, my hands have touched yeah. part of it, their hands have touched part of it and a yeah. and a beautiful art piece has come about that's able to be sold all over the world and people like journals people are able to write down their thoughts their prayers and keep this art piece as a as a keepsake forever you know like I just love that idea yeah I I do too I think that's so amazing and I think it again just brings it back to how we are all so closely together and I think Mm -hmm. it's so amazing there are a few organizations that I'm aware of who have tried to really be able to take a system of something that is working somewhere and be able to bring that back to Canada and for Mm -hmm. us to almost be in the reverse. I think it's easy sometimes to think that being in a first world country where we live, that we have the answers to things that undeveloped countries need. And I don't think that that's always the case. I think Mm -hmm. we have so many things that we need to learn here and have different kinds of broken systems here that would be different in every country. But to be able to have the insight and the just the unique perspective of people from a country and to be able to bring that back to our country and flip the tables around a little bit on that for us to be able to think differently is Mm -hmm. so cool to be able to teach that to our children and to see that and have your entire business model based around that is pretty impressive. Yeah, no, it is. It is pretty neat to be able to, to feel like a small person, right? You're, I'm a small person here in Canada and I get to join forces with, with these other people who who've got so many gifts and talents and abilities and we can you know bring all we have together and create something beautiful which I think is pretty pretty neat and you know I think this whole pandemic thing has allowed us us to realize just how small the world is like we're all pretty connected here even though we're disconnected we're we can be brought together under one you know one cause, one problem, one, Mm -hmm. we are not that different. No. And I think prior to this pandemic all happening, I think that wasn't necessarily a thought process that a lot of people would have thought. Like there's, 
there's so many things in the world that feels like, oh, the world is so big. There's no way we could ever all get on board on something. And boom, within two months here of this all sort of taking place, beginning and happening and continuing on from here, the world has somehow all gotten on board into Mm -hmm. one one kind of thing at the exact same time, which in our lifetime has never happened before, you know? No. And so, yeah, it it is really interesting because I think there are just going to be so many different lessons that come out of all of this. And I think to be able to not just see this as a pandemic and to be able to see how this is able to bring people closer together while obviously recognizing that this is, not something that any of us would have ever wished for or wished to have happened. This is awful. But anytime I believe something happens, there's just, there's always something good that has to come out of it in order for that to just have been for naught. You know, you have gone through this whole entire pandemic and to come out of it and feel like you haven't changed one single Mm -hmm. ounce out of it to me feels like such a waste. Yeah, I totally agree. I think sometimes when we're squeezed, we're forced to look at the things within us that aren't working, that mm-hmm. need change, right? And and these these opportunities, these are, I mean, it's a terrible situation, but you're right. There are opportunities in here for growth. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. Well, and I feel like there there aren't really a lot of times in our life if you aren't this is the time that we've all been sort of given where things have been maybe more still and more Mm -hmm. quiet, even though there still is a lot of noise going on and there can be a lot of fear. But I feel like for myself, I've really tried to sort of just block out a little bit. And maybe that's naive of me, but blocking out the, the day to day, I don't need updates about what's going on. I don't need to know all of the details. I need to just decide how this, time right now is working best for myself and my mm-hmm. family and not being oblivious to what's going on around, obviously, but, you know, just kind of giving ourselves permission to just figure out what feels right for us rather yeah. than thinking that we have to always be worried about everything else that's going on and is this the right thing and is this not and I think that kind of comes back to play in business too like it's really easy to kind of look at other other businesses whether they're in a similar industry or not um, as your own business and think oh man should I be doing that oh maybe I'm missing the ball by not by not doing this should I not be doing this should I be doing this you know you kind of can second guess yourself a lot when you're um, when you're trying to figure out what is right but this is sort of just like toned it all down and said totally. you know, like, there's no rules <laughs> yeah what and what <laughs> yeah and what's important to you like now is the time where we let all that extra noise go and we just get to zero in on okay what is really important to us because that's what we need to develop that's what we need to grow that's the direction we need to head you know absolutely and that takes a lot of mindfulness and mm-hmm. due diligence, which in busy day-to-day lives as we're raising children and keeping your family going and just keeping up with all of the things that are there, it's just so easy to always kind of find excuses as to why there's not time to do that self-reflection, right? There's always this and that. Okay, well, tomorrow will be better. Okay, well, now tomorrow's filled up, so maybe the next day. And it just kind of goes on and on. And I think you don't really realize how often we're all doing that until something like this hits where you've been told no. And it's not just a no, this is like permanent marker in the calendar. No, (laughs) don't leave your house, right? (laughs) That's right. Yeah, every time someone asks me, are you busy tomorrow? I'm like, well, no. (laughs) I can help you with that. (laughs) Yeah, that's, that's one of the side effects of right now. Nobody can really, every time someone calls, you're like, are you busy? And you don't really have the excuse to say yes. can't say a little white line like yes I'm busy everyone knows we're not busy (laughs) you're home pick up the phone that's right I know you're in there (laughs) I love that um so I wanted to I feel like it's always so great to know just kind of the real fun kind of details behind behind the business owner and I know that you 
I don't know if you have this set up where your entire family is technically considered owners of this business or if you and your husband are the owners of the business, but you being the, the person here right now as the, as the mm-hmm. CEO of the business, we'll call you. Um, I would love to kind of just know about you and your, your day-to-day because I feel like the great part about this is not only are you able to share the stories of these incredible artisans from different places, but you yourself have been able to share yourself and your beautiful story of um, taking dark situations that come up in life, such as a child needing a family and turning it into something beautiful out of this all. And I can only imagine that you see similarities in that and your business constantly with Mm -hmm. sort of the way that there's just this restoration happening in um, how there is always something good that can come out of something really bad. And you guys were able to do that specifically for two beautiful little humans. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So I would love to hear the fun little details and I won't even know these things about you. So this will be really great to learn this for myself (laughs) as well. So, and it's also hilarious because right now these questions I'm going to ask you are going to be so different probably than maybe what you would have even said like, two months ago these answers to you because life as we know it (laughs) right (laughs) totally changed totally changed however you're like me where you were used to being at home during the day like I've worked from home for seven years so this really hasn't felt all that different in regards to like I like being at home I like having my routine here it's all good everything's great but I was not used to having my entire family around oh. me all day long. <laughs> Working from home is all fun and games when you're alone. That's right. <laughs> and then you have a husband and two little mini associates around, and you're like, oh, wow, this is a very different home office environment than thinking that they're at school all day. Done. Yes, totally. Um, so what is one thing that you do in the morning that sets your tone for the day? Kim, I need a good cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> you and I need <laughs> there's something about just sitting there uninterrupted, which is a sort of a loose term uninterrupted when you have four children. Yeah. But sitting there and just like taking some time to just mm-hmm. catch your breath and set the tone of the day before the mad rush of everybody else's deeds take over. Yeah. So I just need to sit there with a cup of coffee. And my kids, no, give mama some space because this will change your day. <laughs> yes. This is not going to end well if you mess with mama before she's had her whole cup of coffee. Right. <laughs> and I don't want to warm this thing up later. This is going down now. This is going down <laughs> hot. Totally. <That's> right. <laughs> exactly it. I love that. So what do you put in your coffee? What is your coffee order? Which So right now, our coffee order is all just coming from home, right? That's We're right. not uh, going through a drive through potentially. No. Um, what, what do you drink? I mm-hmm. am a French press girl, and mm. we're a dairy-free home because our, our two youngest children have dairy allergies. So a cashew milk in my coffee is what I do on a daily basis. Look at you, but, modern modern woman drinking her cashew milk. I know, right? But on the weekends, <laughs> I like to shake it up a little bit, and I I'll put a little coconut cream and honey in there, mm. and that's that's a real treat for me. A so. real treat. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> um, what is something? Well, this is a funny question because right now we're not leaving that ha- our houses all that all that often, and you referred to your adorable little clutch that you have. But what is something that you always have in your purse? for day to day that you just like can't live without yeah so this year I turned 42 Kim and I never, you, would, you would never tell you still you're still pushing 29 yeah thanks I like to hear <laughs> that kind of lies but I you know what embarrassingly enough the thing that I have to have in reverse and cannot leave at home without are my progressive ones <laughs> <laughs> so, that is the best. I love that that was your I'd answer. I'd love to say it was like my my lipstick or something, but no, I can't see a darn thing without my my old progressive lenses. So. Well, you know what? <laughs> not, nothing wrong with that. The truth, better better that than you walking around blind and not seeing the, <laughs> the world around you just because you don't want to put on your lenses. <laughs> there were some years of denial that I did that too, and this is much better, I'll tell you. <laughs> 
Oh, I love it. Well, it's actually been funny. I was having this conversation with somebody since this COVID started and so many people, like I have so many virtual Zoom and like just digital meetings where you're seeing each other, which obviously normally if I'm meeting with somebody in person, of course, I'm like getting myself ready (laughs) to go to a meeting. But being at home for this amount of time, there are days that happen where if I don't have a virtual meeting scheduled in a day, it's more casual around the house and by casual <laughs> I word for it. don't anybody dare open the door because there's no way I would leave the house looking like this in public but then on the days when you have these meetings set up I've always been noticing people who do wear glasses I I do not have glasses but wearing glasses on the meetings where I'm like wow I feel like that's a really easy way oh, to be yeah. able just to pop on a glasses and really look put together where I'm like I almost want a pair of glasses just for these digital meetings so that I can be like, you know what? Didn't put on my concealer. Don't feel like (laughs) doing anything with my face, but these glasses polished. Oh yeah. Dressing me up. It's a perfect disguise. Right. Covers like all the eye areas that as we get older are Mm -hmm. a little more challenging to, (laughs) to leave the house without doing anything to. Right? Yeah, you can't cover everything with concealer, that's for sure. That's right. Yeah, a good pair of glasses. I actually I have actually ordered myself I and I will I will keep you posted on how these go. I've ordered myself a pair of glasses that are meant for being on the computer, the blue light glasses. Oh. Because I've been getting a lot of headaches being on my computer, which maybe again is just aging. Um, not well. <laughs> so I'm not sure. But I will keep you posted on on the glasses. I'm hoping that nice. they that they kill two birds with one stone. The eyes as well as right. helping the the glare of being on my computer too much every day. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to love them. You are going to love them. 24-7, I will be wearing my blue glasses even when I'm not on the computer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what is one thing that you do besides slowly sipping your coffee in the morning and trying to not be interrupted uh, that you do for self-care uh, to protect your mental health? Now and always, now more than ever, maybe. Yeah, yeah. No, I, you know, I, I am a spiritual person. And so I have a, a personal faith that I just need to spend time just quieting my heart and just, um, just investing into my heart that way. And so mm-hmm. I think that that just helps me to see life through, uh, through a different lens, through a lens of peace, through a lens of like fear, kind of especially in these times, is able to kind of melt away and, and I can see life through peace and hope. And um, I think that's important. I think that's important to me, especially when you go into times that are uncertain or, or painful. Um, and that has just allowed my my mental health to just um, remain in a place of growth, remain in a place of, of healing. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, versus fear, which is so easy to kind of slip into, especially during a time like this when Mm -hmm. things feel scary. And I think if you don't take time to do that, it's really easy to kind of just get sucked into being so focused on how scary things are that you aren't really able to to see a light in all of it. Right, yeah. But I think if we are able to keep our focus on truth and hope, Mm-hmm. I think you can get through these times and you can get through them better, right? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, don't feel like you're just getting through them, but actually thriving through them. Right. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. So what would you say is one, one, you've given me so many nuggets of beautiful advice in this conversation, but what would you say is just one thing that if you could leave my listeners today with a piece of advice or something to hold on to that, that you would give as your final thoughts? I think it's maybe a twofold piece, but I think it's um, first, I think don't shy away from growth opportunities. Um, I think when we realize that there's something broken in us that needs healing, um, that it's a good opportunity to just make sure that we look at those broken pieces and we deal with them and we heal through them. Um, And then on the other end of healing, when we're healing, uh, once we've healed, that we can bring someone with us. We can, you know, pull someone else up with us and bring them, mentor them, bring them into a place of healing as well. So I think, I just think there's so many unique opportunities and unique ways of doing that. There's no one way to do that. But I think that our lives 
are meant to give and serve and and build into other people. And we're meant to grow. And so I think um, if we're able to build lives around the idea that, hey, I want to grow, I want to get better, and I want to see others grow and get better too, that we can just, this world can just change one person at a time. And I think we can start with us, right? Oh, that is amazing. And what what a better time to be putting that into practice than than right now. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Jess. This has just been such a lovely conversation. I feel like we could talk for hours about this, and I am so excited to see more of what is coming down the pipe for Lark and Muddy and the pieces that are coming forward. And I can't wait to peruse for my next gift purchase <laughs> and look online for that. Um, so yeah. we will tag all of your um, social accounts in the show notes so that guests uh, that are listening today can follow along and see see the stories and the beautiful things that are happening uh, over in your world. Well, thank you so much for having me here, Kim. This has just been so much fun. So good to thank talk to you. You as well. Thank you so much. This show would not be possible without you, my incredible listeners. It would mean the world to me if you would subscribe to Celebrating Simple Life on Apple Podcasts or download and listen on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you choose to listen. If you really want to make my day, leave a review. These reviews, ratings, and sharing screenshots of podcast episodes that were engaging for you on your Instagram stories and tagging friends that you think should hear the episode too really helps the podcast grow. It makes me so happy that I often select reviews to read on the show. And if yours is chosen, you will receive a special gift from me. Thank you for being a part of my mission to connect stories of business and life. Cheers to celebrating simple life.